Hey guys, I'm back with another cool catch and cook video today. I'm about to start a little art project I'll show you in the middle. And the fish that I caught is absolutely amazing. One of the coolest fish ever seen on this channel. So stick around, let's do it. Just remember where we're going And remember where we've been I started off right here in the surge zone, and I know the water visibility isn't the best with all these waves crashing in, crazy bubbles foaming up right in front of me, but there's good reason to actually hang out here. There's a number of fish species that, you know, enjoy the surge zone, like wrasse or schools of chub, Hawaiian flag tail, even mullet. I was seeing all these different fish here today, and they'd zoom back and forth as the waves rolled through, so I was waiting for my opportunity to actually catch something delicious. And finally, right here, yeah, got it. This is a surge wrasse, and it's known as one of the most colorful fish in the entire world. What was great about this shot is that it pierced the brain and the skull, so I actually saved all the fish's meat. These fish feed on other small fish, crabs, and even some super spiny sea urchins, which as a carnivore sort of makes me think that this fish is gonna taste really good. These fish are pretty skittish fish, and this is the first surge wrasse that I've ever caught. I saw so many eels today. I won't be doing an eel catch and cook, but if you happen to be looking for a good one, the eel episodes over at Ace Videos, as well as Fish and Grills, are really good ones. Seahorses are super rare in Hawaii, but today was my lucky day. <laughs> I found so much random stuff in the ocean. One time I found cash just floating around on the bottom. Another time I even found a full-size beach chair that looked like it had been there for a couple of years. Pretty often I find these broken shells. These shell fragments are from black-lipped pearl oysters. Inside oysters are sometimes pearls, and here in Hawaii, you can't take live oysters or their pearls. The shell of an oyster is known as mother of pearl, and because mother of pearl is so much less rare than the actual pearls are, it doesn't really hold value like an actual pearl does. But I think these shells are still pretty awesome looking, and I've been collecting them to eventually make something really cool out of them. Man, what a stringer of fish today, hey? That surge wrasse looks so colorful. I even got one invasive fish off the reef, a toa there, a black tail snapper.
So I got another piece of one of these oyster shells. I think they call them black-lipped oysters. They typically have like sort of a black lip on them before the little piece on the edge is cracked off. But I've got a good collection of them. On my first episode ever here on YouTube, I was starting to collect these shells. And so I've now got a good collection. I'm gonna try to make some sort of art piece here with the shells as well as some chunks of mirror to sort of fill in the gaps. I've always had these cool fish around home. Um, my sister has one as well. These are made by my uncle Pat. Now his inspiration is in the Pacific Northwest of salmon. So, I mean, he's so talented and obviously super creative in what he's creating. And I've just loved these. So what I'm sort of thinking is taking the inspiration from this and making a fish here from Hawaii, an ulua or a trevally, a jack, uh, out of these shells in the mirror. So I'm gonna get started on this. I don't know how it's gonna turn out. I'm hoping for the best. I'm not like, you know, into making these art projects typically. So I'm hoping that it comes together, but uh, I just love the way these salmon have always looked and I can't wait to try this out.
I was so excited to get this fish and what a shot, like right through both eyes like that, right through the brain. Uh, pretty happy to get this. And you know, it's a super, super colorful fish, which, you know, in a way makes me think, oh, it should taste really good because the outside looks good. And But I'm not sure. I don't think this fish is like, I've never heard it as being like a great delicacy here in Hawaii, but uh, I kind of expect it to taste a little bit like a parrotfish maybe. Some wrasse, like the ringtail wrasse, are known to have pretty cool looking teeth. So let's try to peel this back and see what this one's look like. Oh man, look at those things. Wow. All right, you know what? That filet actually looks pretty good. It's darker meat than I thought it was gonna be. A lot of parrotfish like Pontanu and stuff have a real white meat. So this definitely has a bit of a darkness to it. All right, so we got some beer batter, uh, golden dip. This is by McCormick. I use a lot of their spices. You guys can find this in any of your Walmarts or Target. I'm gonna start up with this right now and I'm gonna use that non-alcoholic uh, Heineken beer that we bought uh, to, to, to get this started because you can use water with these but the taste is even much better since it is a beer batter mix. It can be a lot better with the actual beer. So we'll add beer to this today and uh, let's go. That should be good. All right, let's see if we can shoot that little horse that I, I found today. Oh yeah, <laughs> that totally works. These are fun, they're super cheap. You can get them on Amazon, AliExpress, lots of places. Uh, they call it a cap gun, but of course it's not like a cap gun like you know we're used to. Um, it shoots your bottle caps. So I'll put a link in the description below if you wanna uh, try one of these out. I don't measure these things, by the way. I always, uh, when I do catch and cooks, I just go by consistency. And the box even suggests, like, you can follow the recipe, they say, but they say, just go by consistency, because whether you're using beer or water, it's not necessarily gonna be the same sort of texture or fluidity or whatever you call that. I think it's supposed to be sort of like a pancake mix, you know, kind of thick, or maybe more, more like a waffle mix, if that's a thicker batter. I forgot a cutting board, so I'm just gonna cut these pieces of fish right into the batter. Having a bubble blade like this makes this super easy. Bubble blades are a super sharp, rust-proof, you know, fishing knife. You can use them for big game and stuff as well. So what I did is I picked up just some uh, coleslaw, but it's like the dry coleslaw, not the one that's pre-dressed. So what I'm gonna do is put in the coleslaw, I'm going to squeeze some lime juice on there, put in my fish, and I've also got some tartar sauce today to 
uh, just sort of add some good flavor. Um, if I wasn't using the tartar sauce, I probably would have gotten regular coleslaw from like the deli that's nice and, you know, pre-dressed, but uh, I thought I'd try it this way today. Last thing here, I have some tartar sauce. I think I'll do one taco with a regular tartar sauce. And since I'm gonna eat the world's most colorful fish, I think the second taco should have the world's most colorful tartar sauce. <laughs> sort of had an explosion there of tartar sauce. Alright guys, I'm super happy about how this turned out. It was better than I expected. We got a bit of a mess going on, but so be it. The uh, colored one, I can't imagine it tasting any different than the, the non-colored one, but let's see if there's any difference between the tastes. Really, really good. All right, I'm gonna try out the regular tartar sauce. This was a winner, through and through, one of my favorite catching cooks, yep. The fish really shone through. You know, when you put it in a beer batter sauce like this, it's bound to taste good. Unless the fish itself was like an absolutely terrible tasting fish. And this one's not, it's really neutral, good taste. I think I like the colored one, weirdly enough, than the, the non-colored uh, tartar sauce. Maybe the coloring had a bit of flavor in it, I'm just not sure. But uh, they both turned out really good. This is one of my favorite catch and cooks I've done from a flavor perspective. It just tasted really good. And I had an option when I was buying the beer batter, I could have gotten some tempura batter, batter instead of beer batter. And I just thought for these type of tacos and stuff, I thought maybe beer batter would be a better choice. And I was super happy with the way it turned out. So I'm glad I did. You know, one of my favorite catch and cooks so far. Thank you so much for watching another episode. If you guys want to see more fishing, spear fishing, I might even do a treasure hunting episode in the next couple coming up. Uh, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and I hope to see you on the next one. Watch a video, let's play Chanel, on this awesome show.